Welcome everybody to Tino's time and it's that time of the month again it's time for your boy Tino's monthly update of everything going on in the baseball world it's the last month of the season we are in the midst of the dog days of summer it's September 1st there is 33 days left of the MLB season I cannot believe how fast that flew by we have teams coming out of nowhere contending. We have teams dropping like flies. We've had a team go 7-20 and 20 this year. We had a team lose 19-plus games in the last month. It's been a crazy month in the baseball world. So let's not waste any time, and let's get right into everything that's been going on. The Dodgers, are they going to win the NL West? I mean, in the last month, we've seen the Dodgers, the Giants, continue to skyrocket every single time the Giants win an 8 out of 9 the Dodgers are doing the same the Dodgers are winning 8 out of 9 but the San Diego Padres have completely fallen and they have completely drastically are fighting for a spot in the playoffs last time we spoke when we did my July recap and we went over everything that went on in July we were talking about how it was going to be the Dodgers and the Padres for the NL wild card but now it looks like the Do the Padres are are fighting for their shot in the wild card because as of right now they're actually in the wild card spot but they're only a half a game out to the Reds and we'll get into that a little bit later that Yankees Red Sox game forget about it I don't know who else is gonna win the second wild card but I don't think it's gonna be the Red Sox the New York Yankees have went on this disgusting ridiculous winning streak they went on a 13 plus game winning streak they almost won 14 before they lost but they went on a streak that was insane they lost a game to the Chicago White Sox that we'll get into a little bit later but that Yankees Red Sox that Yankees Red Sox AL wild card game forget about it because I just do not see the Red Sox going anywhere but I see the Yankees being in that game I just see them facing somebody else besides the Red Sox this baseball season has been just this baseball season has been crazy we're gonna need a tiebreaker for that second NL wild card I just talked about it I mentioned the Padres and the Reds we might have to see a one game wild card with the Padres and the Reds it's gonna be crazy the last month of the season is getting underway tonight, and I cannot wait to see everything that is going to go down. But in the last month, we have also seen some injuries. And these injuries this season between the hamstrings, between everything that has been going on, it is ridiculous. But in the last month, we've seen Ozzy Albies from the Braves. He had to be carried off the field at Dodger Stadium in the fifth inning yesterday after fouling a ball off of his left knee. The x-rays were negative, so that is a positive sign. Hopefully, he's able to come back and be ready for the playoffs, but being carried off the field is never a good sign. And as a White Sox fan, seeing all these injuries that happened to Nick Madrigal, watching Eloy in, in spring training, watching Luis Robert go down with the hip flexor, I hate seeing guys get car carried and carted off the field. It is, it is just no fun. But speaking of the White Sox, the White Sox have lost three big names in the last day and a half and it kind of worries me Lucas Giolito left the game yesterday it seemed that he kind of tweaked something one of the players on the Pittsburgh Pirates hit a little a little softball a little softball to Lucas to the left side but Lucas kind of threw it wrong and he ended up leaving the game Lance Lynn went on the disabled list yesterday with an injury with right knee inflammation they, it was, just, I, you know, that's okay. The White Sox have a 10-game lead, but they also lost the guy, the catalyst to their offense, Tim Anderson. He's been having sore legs for a little bit these last few days and these last few weeks. But finally, the White Sox put him on the disabled list with hamstring tightness. And hopefully that these three guys are going to be okay. Like I just mentioned, the White Sox do have a 10-game lead in the AL Central. So it's good to get them healthy and ready for September. Hopefully they're not gone for too long. And hopefully they're back because we need them on the south side. Especially Tim Anderson. He's the catalyst to the offense, like I said. And we'll be talking to him. Uh, we'll be talking about him in a little bit. About some crazy moment that he had in August. But back to the injuries. George Springer. We've also we haven't seen him very much, you know, since he came back to his to from an IL 
stint that he had before and but in only his second game from the IL the left knee he had to leave the game on Tuesday against the Orioles and in the seventh inning after the club noted the tight the signs of discomfort while he was running the bases and it's one of those things George Springer he's been on the IL so much this year I don't even I feel like I haven't even watched the Blue Jays game with him in it and it sucks because George Springer was so good on the Astros even though he was part of the bang 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 it just sucks to see these guys go on the injured list and it's, it's crazy JT L JT Real Mieto, Mieto oh my god I'm so sorry the catcher from the Philadelphia Phillies he also went, he, he rolled his ankle during his at-bat against the Diamondbacks on Saturday and was out of the team's lineup Monday and Tuesday, and he is day-to-day, -day, so hopefully he is able to get back. Jesse Winker, he's been a great player for the Reds, and he's a big reason why the Reds are in the position that they are in. He was able to take some swings on Tuesday for the second time since going on the DL. He's been on the DL for a little bit. Hopefully he's able to come back for the Cincinnati Reds in this stretch run because he was a big reason why in the beginning and the middle why they were able to get far, so far ahead and that Reds team is playing so ridiculous right now. It's crazy. Joey Votto is breaking records. It's disgusting. A rookie that went on the disabled list, or he left the game, I'm sorry, on Sunday. Key Brian Hayes from the Pittsburgh Pir Pirates, he left the game on Sunday. He did not face the White Sox on Tuesday, and I don't know if he's going to be in the lineup tonight, but hopefully he's able to get back, and he's a young player. But if, you're, if I'm the Pirates, I would not rush him because you're going to want him. He's going to be on your team forever, so don't rush the injury. Glaber Torres for the Yankees. The Yankees transferred Torres to a rehab assignment to AAA, so that's good that the Yankees are getting him back, but it's kind of scary because the Yankees have played so good in August, and like I said, they won 13 games, and it's just, it's crazy. I just cannot believe it. So, the last injury I do want to talk about, though, is, let me get it. Alberto Mondesi, you know, he's been out for a while. We haven't seen him most of the season. He had a strained left oblique, who, and he's been out, like I said, since mid-June. He worked out with the Royals before their game on Tuesday, and he could be activated to a major league rehab assignment by the end of this week. So hopefully we see Mondesi get back on the field by the end of the month, even though the Royals aren't really going anywhere. It's one of those things that I just, I love watching Alberto Mondesi play. He's one of the great young players. So get back and whoop some ass because we know you can do it. Now that we talked about all the injuries, I hate talking about injuries because these injuries this season are ridiculous. So let's talk about a couple great moments that happened in the month of August. And let's talk about one of the best players in the game. And first, let's talk about that best player in the game. Shohei Otani is the rightful owner of the MLB MVP this year. He is having a ridiculous season. He is he's at 42 home runs going into September, but he's only hit nine of them since the home run derby. And it's one of those things that, you know, even though he hasn't hit a lot of home runs, even though it feels like he has hit a lot of home runs, he's still doing good on the mound. And, you know, the Angels aren't really going anywhere. But Shohei Otani is a big reason on why people want to see the Angels. And I don't know if you saw it earlier last week. People literally booed the Angels for walking Shohei because people literally only came to see Shohei. Shohei Otani is going to be the MVP this year. He's playing ridiculous this season. And honestly, I can see him getting to 50 home runs. Let's talk about the moments, though. We talked a little bit about the team that went 7-20. And it was the Chicago Cubs. You know, the Chicago Cubs, they did a whole trade rehaul. They traded away Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Chris Anthony Rizzo, Craig Kimbrell, Ryan Zapera. They literally traded away their whole entire team. And we'll get into Baez a little bit because he's got a lot of thumbs up to say lately. But the Cubs, 7-20, and 20, you know, this was expected because it was just, it's, it's one of those things when you get rid of, a lot of your players especially your core of your team there's a lot of new young guys and a couple of the guys that the Cubs did get in those trades are on the injured list such as Nick Madrigal and Pete Crone Armstrong from the Mets the outfielder I think that's how you say his his whole name hopefully I got that right 
But, you know, it's one of those things, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, Cub fans are really worried and they want to bring back Javier Baez. In my opinion, I would not bring back Javier Baez, people. If you have not seen, Javier Baez is having all types of issues in the Mets. He was barely batting 200 since joining the Mets. He just came off of the disabled list and now he's got the thumbs up and he's booing and we got Francisco Lindor doing it. The Mets are a disaster and the Mets were one of the teams that we talked about a lot. The Mets were a team that a month ago we were talking about they were going to the playoffs. They were winning the division. You know, the Phillies weren't doing so good and it just the Mets had it the Mets had that division but now the Mets sit at 65 and 67 and they're five and a half games out of the wild card and it seems as if the Philadelphia Phillies have a better shot at doing what you know the, I just cannot believe how bad the Mets felt the Mets literally are five and a half out of the division too. They're two games under 500, and yes, the Braves still lead that division at 70 and 61. But the Philadelphia Phillies, as I just mentioned, are 68 and 64. They're only two and a half games out, so that's why I was saying, you know, the Phillies were gaining so much ground, and we talked about it. The Mets had it, and it's just crazy to see everything. So Cubs fans, you really did, you really lucked out because, in my opinion. Let Baez just have the thumbs up, and let's let's not have him in Chicago. You know, that's just my opinion, but what do I know? I'm just a 25-year-old recording. Anyway, let's talk about another moment that happened this month. The Baltimore Orioles, I mentioned it a little bit earlier ago, they lost 19 straight baseball games. Guys, how do you lose 19 straight baseball games? I would literally be having a mental breakdown if the White Sox didn't win for three weeks. How in the heck do you lose 19 straight games? That is ridiculous, and that is just crazy. The Orioles, yes, we know they're a rebuilding team, but that is something that I thought I'd never see in the MLB. But they finally, finally broke it on August 25th versus the Angels from a 10-6 victory, but they had to come back with five runs in the eighth inning. And it was one of those things, watching the Orioles struggle this much was hard to watch as a baseball fan because losing that much, do, I don't even know what it would do to your psyche. And it is just, it's just crazy. But the Orioles, you know, they're not going anywhere. As you know, they're sitting at 41 and 90. Their, two, their run differential is negative 233. They're 42 and a half games out of first place. We didn't really expect them to do anything. But I never saw, I never expected them to do that. And maybe by the time we talk, when we talk about everything that happened in September, maybe we're talking about the Orioles having a 100 loss plus season. I honestly, I hope that doesn't happen, but it just, watching that this past month was crazy. But speaking of watching things, people, you know, I don't know if, you know, because like I feel old. But, like, I was at my cousin's house, and I tried to get him to watch the Field of Dreams movie. You know, the White Sox and Yankees were supposed to play at Field of Dreams game back last year. But because of COVID, they pushed it back. And they really, really tried to get it in for this season. So, I went back, and I rewatched the movie. And, you know, it's one of those movies that if you haven't seen it, it's a baseball classic. It's with Kevin, Kevin Costner. Shoeless Joe Jackson, I'm sorry, that it just that's what it's about. It's about the White Sox, Shoeless Joe Jackson, and everything. And it's just crazy. I tried to get my cousin to watch it, like I said, and he just wouldn't get into it. And it's just crazy to see how many kids really have not watched this movie. But they end they ended up doing the game. And I just want to take a minute to talk about this game. Because it's not only that it involved the White Sox, but if you've seen the movie, it's hard to explain if you haven't, but they come out of the cornfield, and it's one of those moments that kind of gives you just like the heebie-jeebies, and it just, it gives you the chills. And, you know, when they started the pregame for this game, Kevin Costner came out of the cornfield, and he's standing there with the ball, and, you know, and the music starts hitting. If you've seen the movie, you're kind of feeling like you're watching the movie again, and it's just one of those things. But it was one of the best opening pregames all of a sudden, the Yankees and the White Sox players started coming out of the cornfields, and it was just awesome. It was one of those things that was just crazy to watch. It was just awesome. It gave me chills. It was everything that I wanted to see, and I was so happy that it was able to get accomplished because I was worried that after the COVID, it wasn't going to be happening. And this is just talking about the stuff that happened before the game. This game, people, was ridiculous. This game was everything that baseball is about and why we love the most amazing game in the American pastime is baseball. 
the White Sox came out and Jose Abreu started it off. He got his he got his thing and he did it and he just Jose Abreu is a goddamn baller and he did it. He made it one nothing. But this game was not even close to being over because then Aaron Judge made it three to one. He had a home run, four hundred and six feet, and it was crazy. But then Tim Anderson doubled. He scored at a mingled, and it was three to two. But then the big baby came up because, as you know, the White Sox got Eloy Jimenez and they got Luis Robert back in the past month. So the White Sox band has kind of been bringing back together. And Eloy hit a bomb. 363 feet to deep right field and right field felt like it was 200 feet because these wall these outfield walls were crazy and it was five to three white Sox. the white Sox then took a seven to three lead because of sabi zavala and the white Sox were feeling good they were winning seven to three but this is where it gets crazy people the yankees did not give up brett gardner hit a home run aaron judge hit a home run and then Giancarlo Stanton hit a home run, and it was 8-7. to seven. And I was like, what is going on here? Why is this happening? This should not be happening at all. This is just, this is not, this just should not be happening at all. This is about the White Sox, and this is just, you know, it was just nuts. And But I always say you never give up because you never know what is going to happen. I've seen games where the White Sox are winning 9-1, to one and they've lost 10-9 to nine in the bottom of the ninth with two outs. I've seen the White Sox come back. Five to five runs down. I've seen teams come back from eight runs down. I've seen the Cubs walk off in the bottom of the ninth. You've seen so many crazy things in baseball. So that's why I just say you never give up. And you know, people always want to say, yeah, it gets the steam out of the system and everything. But in the bottom of the ninth inning, you know, they aren't going to say too much about it because it was it's something that's probably going to get overlooked. But Sebi Zavala's walk in the bottom of the ninth. He was down 0-2. He came back all the way back and he walked. And that set up the moment for Tim Anderson. And this moment, people, is something that if you're a White Sox fan, if you're a baseball fan in general, if you love the movie Field of Dreams, this is a moment that you will never forget. Tim Anderson comes up and the first pitch. This man hits a bomb in the right field and it's over over people tim anderson walks the white Sox off nine to eight after the white Sox gave up the lead and this is something that you know in baseball you know you never know what's going to happen like i said and the walk off it was the way it was supposed to happen the way the day was the way the movie just the way the movie is about everything about it is phenomenal and tim and anderson ends it and walks it off and it was one of those things that was phenomenal and a moment that i will never forget as a white Sox fan and like Mm -hmm. i said if you Mm -hmm. love baseball or if you love the movie feel the dreams you're always going to remember this moment because it was awesome unless you're a cubs fan or maybe you're just not you don't like the white Sox in general then you won't like it but if you're a baseball fan, you're going to love this moment. And I think it's pretty cool that they will be going back next year to the Field of Dreams game. It will be the Cubs versus the Cardinals. And nothing against the Cubs and Cardinals. I just personally feel like because the movie is about the White Sox, I feel like it should be about the White Sox. And they should always be involved in the game. And I'm not even just saying this as a White Sox fan. I'm saying this as a baseball fan in general and as a movie lover of the movie. It is, I mean, it's literally about the White Sox. Why would we have anybody else play? But I get it. It's about money and they want to have everybody else be able to come and go to the games and, you know, see their teams. So I get it. That's going to be really cool. So that's going to be happening next year. I just don't think that this game will ever be able, it will never be the same and it's never going to be the same feeling. So, you know, that's okay. And I can't wait to see the Cubs and Cardinals go at it, even though we're going to be seeing like, Patrick Wisdom and Wilson Contreras and guys that we really don't know versus the Cardinals and they're probably going to destroy them. But that's just my opinion, you know, whatever. So now that we've talked about some moments, we've talked about Shohei Otani being the MVP, we've talked about all the injuries, let's talk about all the people that are leading the MLB in hits, RBIs, strikeouts, everything in the both American and National League. And then we're going to talk about the records and the standings and everything going on in that. And then I'll let you go and I'll let you enjoy your month because I know you really don't want to hear from me that much. So let's get into the leaders from the AL 
in hitting and pitching. And from average, Michael Brantley is hitting 315, and he's having a phenomenal season. We just mentioned Shohei Otani. He's had 42 home runs this season, and hopefully he can get eight more by the end of September. And remember, there's three games in October, so we'll have to see what happens then. But I think Shohei will be able to get to 50. Maybe he'll even hit 55. We'll have to see. But the RBI machine, Jose Abreu, leads the leads the AL right now with 102. And, you know, it's kind of crazy to see because that man's been beaten up and bruised all season long. With runs and hits, Vlad, Mar Vlad Guerrero Jr. leads the AL with 98 runs and 151 hits. And rookie Cedric Mullins also has 151 hits. I told you Cedric Mullins is going to be a rookie that's going to be great for years to come. Whit Merrifield has 38 stolen bases, and for a team like the Royals, Whit Merrifield, I was, that was a guy I was surprised that was not traded at the trade deadline, but that's just my opinion. I think the Royals should have traded him, but hey, that's, I can't do much. Anyway, the pitching now, the pitching leaders, we have Garrett Cole with 13 strikeouts. With losses, we have Matt Harvey and Jorge Lopez from the Baltimore Orioles. And like we talked about with the Orioles, when you lose 19 in a row, your pitchers are at least getting two or three starts, so I'm not surprised that both Oriole pitchers are in the loss category. With ERA, it's the big horse, Lance Lynn from the Chicago White Sox. He has an ERA of 2.59, and that will seem to sit like that, hopefully for only one start missed. Get back, Lance Lynn. We need you on the south side. Uh, with strikeouts... The Toronto Blue Jays, Robbie Ray, leads the league with a hundred two with not a hundred, I'm sorry, two hundred and two strikeouts. Innings pitched, Zach Granke leads the American League with 159.2. And back on the south side, Liam Hendricks, that crazy Australian, leads the league with 30 saves. And he's a big reason why the Sox are in the position that they are today. But now let's get to the National League. The National League has a lot of Trey Turner. Trey Turner, since moving over to the Washington, since moving over from the Washington Nationals to the Los Angeles Dodgers, seems to just be on fire because now he is leading the league with a bad. He's batting 332. He has 154 hits and 26 stolen bases, and he leads the National League in all of those categories. Francisco Tatis, since being injured and coming back, he's played a lot of outfield, and he has 36 home runs. So that seems to not stop that man very much. Leading RBIs is Milwaukee Brewers, Jessa, Jesse Aguilar. And, you know, it's, oh, I'm sorry, not on, he was on the Brewers. My bad. He's on the Miami Marlins now. He's leading the league in RBIs. Holy crap, I didn't even know that. That's my mistake. I thought he was on the Brewers still. Anyway, he's leading the league. And Freddie Freeman, the guy that never ages, he's leading the league in runs on the National League side with 95. Now to the pitchers. With wins, Julio Horaeus, the guy that got the last out for the Dodgers in the World Series last year, he leads the league with 15 home, or not 15 home runs, I'm sorry, 15 wins. And with the loss column, we have Lu Luis Castillo and Patrick Corbin. That's surprising because Patrick Corbin, if you don't remember when he was on the Diamondbacks, he was a really good pitcher when he was on the Washington Nationals. He was a really good pitcher. And that's just surprising because I really thought that Patrick Corbin was a lot better. But he is on the Washington Nationals. And the Nationals just aren't that good of a team this year anyway. So I guess, yeah, yeah. The ERA is Walker Bueller, of course. The Dodgers got to be on this list at some point, right? He's got a 2.05 ERA and he's just mowing them down left and right. Now with K's and innings pitched. We have Zach Wheeler. He has 208 strikeouts and 182.2 innings pitched, and he's mowing them down left and right. And Zach Wheeler on the Philadelphia Phillies is a big reason why the Phillies have been able to get back into the race, and they are sitting in the standings on where they are today. With saves, the last category in league leaders in the MLB, or in the American League and National League, it's Mark Malenko from the San Diego Padres. The San Diego Padres, like we've talked about, they've fallen very bad, and they are still in a good position, but the Reds are right behind them, and honestly, the way the Reds are playing, they might just sneak into the playoffs. So, that's just my opinion, but Mark Milanko leads the league, in, or the National League, with saves with 36. But now, 
that we've mentioned. I've talked about all the league leaders. Now let's get into the standings and let's talk about the good things and let's talk about where each team is at and who is going to be where they're at because like I said, we've seen a lot of teams drop and fallen in the last month and you know with September, guys are going to be a lot um, a lot more tired and they're going to be a lot, you know, that we've seen so many people go on the injured list just in the past 24 hours. So let's start in the American League. For the first, if the season ended today, the teams in the American League would be the Tampa Bay Rays, the Houston Astros, the Chicago White Sox leading their divisions, and then we would be having a one-game playoff with the Red Sox and the Yankees. And like I said earlier, the Yankees-Red Sox series, unless the Red Sox have a really good September, I honestly can see the A's or even Seattle sneaking in, or hey, the Blue Jays are only four and a half out, so we could easily see them sneaking in too. So in my opinion, I don't really see the divisions changing too much. The Rays have a bit, they don't, the Rays have a eight game lead. The White Sox have a 10 game lead and the Astros have a five game lead. And I'm not saying the five game lead is not far and in between. They could easily come back and win the division. And like I said, we've seen so many crazy things happen. But in my opinion, the way it sits is I think that's the way it's going to stay because I see the Yankees, they're obviously going to get that one game wild card. The Indians, you know, they're one game over 500 with 65 and 64. But unless they go on some mirac- miraculous, miraculous run and some crazy stretch in September, I just don't see them catching the White Sox with them being 10 games out of 500. And it, or 10 games out of first place, not over 500. I'm sorry, they're one game over 500. And like I said, with the West, I just don't see the Astros. And I see it's going to be more between Oakland and Seattle for that last wild card spot. That's just my opinion. Because, you know, I just, the way it looks, it's, I think the Rays are going to get the first buy, first round by. I'm hoping the White Sox can get, sneak up there and get the second seed because it would be really nice not to have to face, you know, the Yankees. I would rather have to wait to face them in the ALCS, but that's just me as a White Sox fan. But, like I said earlier, I think by the end of the month, I really think that Seattle is going to be able to sneak in. I'm not saying they'll be able to make the playoffs. I'm just saying by in middle of September or by the end of September, I'm saying even if it's for one day, I think Seattle is going to have that wild card spot and they could easily easily well win it. I just, you know, I just don't see anybody winning versus the Yankees right now in that wild card game. So whoever the Yankees do face or whoever makes it in that second wild card, I just feel like it's a death sentence. If it's the Yankees or if it's the Red Sox, the A's or the Mariners, I just don't I just don't see them beating the Yankees. So either way, I see the Yankees winning that wild card game and that's just what I think as of right now. We'll see what happens, but the American League is kind of, you know, the only thing that they're really playing for right now is where everyone's going to be seating. And that last wild card. So it should be really interesting. It's going to be a fun month in the American League. But now let's talk about the National League. Because I mentioned it a little bit earlier with the Mets. We talked a lot about it. The Braves are 2.5 games up on the Phillies in the division for the AL East. But last time we talked, we talked about how the Mets had it. The Mets were literally leading the division. But then Javier Baez got hurt. Francisco Lindor's been out. And, you know, they just weren't playing good baseball. And they, you know, we, they haven't had their whole pitching staff the whole season. And it kind of just fell apart. That's why you just never know what's going to happen in baseball. But now sitting at two games under 500, I really don't know if the Mets are going to make it. Because as of right now, they are sitting like they are sitting five and a half out of the wild card. So I don't really see that happening, and I don't see them really making the playoffs. So I think that it's going to be more about the Braves, and maybe the Phillies can sneak into the playoffs, but I don't really see them winning the division. But yeah, the Milwaukee Brewers have a 10.5 game lead, and like we talked about with the Reds, the Reds are more fighting with the Padres over who's going to win that second wild card. Is it going to be the Padres, or is it going to be the Reds? And the way Joey Votto's playing, the way flipping Nick Castellano's playing, the way all those guys on the Reds are playing is crazy, and once they get Jesse Winker back, it's only going to get better, and they're only going to get a lot healthier and be better down the stretch in September. And, I'm sorry, excuse me, guys, my bad. The last division I want to talk about, it's the AL West. We talked about it with the Dodgers, the Giants, and the Padres. In my opinion, 
I don't know if the Giants are going to be able to hold on. They only have a half a game lead right now. And yes, you win eight. The Giants win eight. The Dodgers win eight. The Giants lose four. The Dodgers lose four. It's back and forth. Everybody can't win. When they win, they lose. When they lose, they win. It just, it's crazy. It's back and forth. It's, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen with this division. But the Dodgers are so deep with Trey Turner, Max Scherzer, all the pieces that they've had, Cody Bellinger, just everybody on that team is ridiculous. And not saying that the Giants aren't going to get into the playoffs because even if they do fall out of the division lead, they have, I feel like they have a 20-plus game lead on that first wild card, so it's not even going to matter. They'll make the playoffs. It just depends if they're going to play a three-game series or a one-game series. And hopefully they play that three-game series because, in my opinion, I personally would love to see the Dodgers have to play that one-game wild card because I always just want... I like seeing stuff different. And the Dodgers have literally owned the NL since the Cubs stopped... or since the Cubs won the World Series back in 2016. And yeah, we had the Nationals win the World Series. But they also faced the Dodgers in the NLCS. So the Dodgers were just right there about to get to the World Series. So in my opinion, I want to see something new. So hopefully the Giants can hold on. But right now, sitting on September 1st, the division is only a half a game lead. And it's crazy, people. This month of September is going to be nuts. We have divisions that are, like I said, half a game. We have divisions that are 10 and a half games. We have teams fighting for wildcard spots. We have teams fighting for division titles. We have teams hoping to have that magic number because the team that have the lowest magic number right now is the Chicago White Sox. It is at 23 or 22, I think. And it's crazy to be talking about magic numbers already because this baseball season has flew by. And, you know, we're already in September. If you haven't already, go check out my draft preview on, at, on Tino Time, on YouTube, and everywhere else where that you get your podcast because football is almost underway and your boy Tino is covering football every week. I got you covered. But don't you worry, I still got you covered on baseball. I ain't forgetting about America's pastime because I love baseball. And this pa- this next month of September is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what happens in this month. I cannot wait to see where teams sit at the end of the month. I cannot wait to start talking about the playoffs and see when everybody clinches and everybody does what they have to do to make the playoffs. So I hope everybody enjoyed this recap of everything that went down in august in the mlb season in the american pastime if you haven't already go like at tino time 1996 on instagram tino's time wrestling on twitter or tino's time wrestling on instagram tino's time on instagram and twitter go like my facebook pages at tino time wrestling at tino's time and go follow everything that i got going on in september and for the baseball season football season and wrestling. I hope everybody has a nice month, and until October, this is your boy Tino, signing out.